Good morning, Art Journaler. This is Stacy. Today we have some Daniel Smith watercolor sticks. So I have these three. I've never used these before. They're highly pigmented and we're going to try a few different ways. We're going to first I'm going to swatch and then we're going to make some art with them. And I'm just going to show you the process. So I have some things on my desk. So I brought my watercolor journal and I brought these tools. So I have some Q-tips, a little tiny skewer, a couple of paint brushes, uniball and a micron pen in case I want to do some pen work, uh, a little water dish, some water over here, and then I have some alcohol. So I just filled this little spray bottle with alcohol and I have some just another bottle filled with alcohol and then I have a spray bottle of water. We're going to just play with them all. Oh, a sharpener in case I want it, my brushes, and this is salt. And I have my, what I use as a watercolor palette right there, and we're good to go. If you go to the Daniel Smith webpage, it gives you some ideas on how to use these. Do a little swatch test so we know what we have here. Opera pink, this is Hansa yellow, this is phalo turquoise. So I'm going to wet my brush, and I'm just going to see how these work. Now they talk about the different ways you can use these, and we're going to also explore that as we go. You can do the opera pink. I don't feel that's as pigmented this way. That seems a little more waxy actually than this one. But let's see what else we can do. And this is the phalo turquoise. We're going to try this one a different way. Let's see what happens if we just add water right to the stick. So my brush is super wet and can I pick up a lot of... Now the the claim to fame with the Daniel Smith watercolors is that, or these sticks is that they're very highly pigmented. Now pink is um, not as strong a, a color as red and this is very textured cold press watercolor paper and that could be making the difference also. Why it seems so waxy here. So I'm going to try it this way. I'm going to add some pink to it. That's a little more pinky. The other thing I want to try is making the page wet first and then coloring that way. So that came out a little bit better. Let's try this one. Very pigmented. That's very pigmented, much more than these. So more subtle, doing it this way. Phalo turquoise, this is still wet. Give it a little bit. Wetting your page first makes them, the pigment really jump out. Let's add a little water to this. I just like to experiment, see what we've got, see what I've got here, and then see how these dry. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry. So while we were gone, I tried to mix some of these colors to see the turquoise and the Hansa yellow made this green. The turquoise and this upper rose made this purpley color. Actually, there's a little bit of green in there too. And then the upper rose and the yellow, Hansa yellow made that peachy, orangey color. It was just me playing. On the website, it says you can sharpen these, which involves removing the paper. I'm going to remove from this end and I'm going to do that for each one. I just want to keep the names intact. Now the beauty to these is this would be something easy to carry. You can travel with this. After using it on this page, I'm a little sorry that I didn't get just like a primary blue, red, and yellow so I could mix my own colors. When we sharpen these, we're going to save the shavings. Okay, I'm going to sharpen them all and then we'll be back. I did sharpen these. The mistake I made was I used the darker color first, so that sort of came out in the yellow a little bit, and I don't mind that. You want to save your sharpening peels, and so that's what I did here. I have these little plastic containers that actually have lids that I can save this in because you'll be able to use this and make watercolors with them, which we're going to try in a minute. The idea was to sharpen these and that you could draw with that. So I just used this little inexpensive sharpener. I don't even know where I got it, but it's not a very expensive one. So now I have these little shavings and we're going to draw with our sharpened sticks. So I'm going to do a little wet over here and I'm going to leave this side dry. I'm trying to wet about half of it, but you know, give or take. You could take wet and draw with it. I'm making a nonsense drawing, just sketching to see what happens here. And you can see it softens it. I 
and that's how that works. Now the other way is to just draw directly on the paper and then wet it. Okay, so that's another way you could use those. Another way is to just take some of these shards, these sharpening shards, dissolve them. So you could do this with every color. Dissolve them with some water in your palette somewhere and you would get a highly pigmented paint from that. Now this is in the wet, remember. So I'm not drawing anything. <laughs> Maybe I'm trying to make it look like a old plant or part of the landscape, but that's another way to use them. So you could take the sharpening shards, you save them. You know, you can put them in a container. I actually do have lids for these. This would dry in here and you could reuse it and re-wet it. Now we're gonna experiment. Now that this is dry, we're gonna move on to the next experiment. I'm gonna wet the page. So I'm gonna use this water sprayer. Okay, so I made the page super wet. So I'm gonna start out here with some yellow and I'm just lightly coloring. I'm not really doing anything in particular. I'm just using the sticks exactly as they are. And if we get them close together and they mingle, all the better. Now you could see a lot of color came off on these too. So let's see, because the page is wet, they're gonna spread, hopefully. The upper rose one, the granulation, it feels a lot more waxy than it does anything else. So I'm a little just okay with that. This is the brush I want. And I'm just gonna spread a little water. Hopefully these are gonna mingle a little bit get them close together, see what happens. Okay, so this is the start of, now you can see there's a lot of granulation kind of things happening here. And I probably put this on too thick. There's probably people shuddering <laughs> at what I've done. I just wanted to get a little mix. This is salt, just your regular everyday table salt. And I am going to just spread salt on here and see what happens. Now it could be that it's not wet enough to really see good results here. So what should have happened, so I'm gonna go back to this page and we're gonna try it again and I'm gonna not make them so saturated, the colors. So we'll start again. I will make the page super wet. This is watercolor paper in this book, by the way. I'm gonna start with the yellow and I'm gonna try not to have so much color on the page. See where we go. And I wanna add the green. Okay, so I'm going to start here. Okay, now I don't know if it's going to be any better super wet, but we're going to try it. It's all an experiment. I want to get a little more yellow on there. And then maybe a little more of this color. Now there's some pooling happening. I'm okay with that. Kind of want that, I think. And now we're gonna try the salt again and see if we get a better effect when it's not so thick. So you can see around some of them, you do get that spread out effect. This has to dry for us to see the full effect. So we're gonna move on, let this dry, and we're gonna try something different. Okay, so I've tried this and you can start to see what's happening here. This here, this is with the salt, the first one we did. Now you have to brush the salt off. There's no question about that. So you could take a little brush or you can just use your fingers depending on what, don't use a wet brush, use a dry brush clearly. But I mostly wanted you to see what happened right here. So this little pigmentation, uh, what is that? Resist, I guess I would call it right here, is from the salt. Now, because the page wasn't maybe wet enough in these other areas or it was too much pigment, it didn't happen as well here. This is definitely from the salt right here. And some of these other ones might be, but not so much. Here's the other side where I made it wetter and less pigment. And you can see a little bit of that happened here. Kind of like that, right? That effect, look at that. That's from the salt. So don't make it too pigmented and you'll get something like this, where the water gets absorbed and it creates these different designs. Now, if you had bigger flake salt, you know, it might make bigger spots for you. 
I don't know. We'd have to play with that. And now we're going to try something completely different. I am going to wet the page and I'm just going to drop in some colors. I think I'm just going to use these two. And I even like this splattery effect, right? We're going to leave it just like this and I'm going to pick up my, oh, let's do this kind first. Let's do, I'm going to dip this into my alcohol and I'm just going to drop a drop right on the page. So if you had a water dropper, that might be even better or a dropper bottle of some sort. And this is a cool effect actually. So now the other idea is to have a spray bottle of alcohol. That's all that's in here. It's a spray old spray bottle I've had. Let's see if we can get some going down here or up there. And you certainly can see the turquoise better as to what's happening than really the yellow. It is happening the same effect. This ring effect with the bigger drops is happening here in the yellow. So this is just an experiment. This is just me taking some new supply which are these watercolor sticks. Uh, this would work with any watercolor, by the way. Any watercolor you have, it, it wouldn't matter. If you watercolored the page, it might spread differently with different colors, different watercolor brands, but basically the same thing is gonna happen. It's gonna create those rings and spread out. I really love this. So this could be one of those things where you make a whole page of watercolor and then you do this. And then you cut these out and use them in your journal. I love this pattern so much in here. This to me is what having a journal is about experimentation. This is such a cool effect. I might make papers like this so far. Hmm, that's my favorite. So I love this sort of pushing and seeing what you can get. These are the Daniel Smith watercolor sticks. Just me playing 